glad we're here. We're glad that you're here and we're going to mute folks um, as we get started. We are going to open it up for more conversation after the half hour service. And we... Um... Hello. 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 This is Ruby Caress, and I am not ready to be viewed. So I'm just listening uh, via audio. Who is that? Okay, I'm going to continue to let folks in as we get started, but I wanted to um, welcome you on behalf of the Interfaith Council of Contra Costa County. The idea for these interfaith healing services, um, especially before, during, and after the election, it was the idea of some of our religious leaders in Concord and Clayton, and so they took the lead, and we are supplementing um, with different parts of our Interfaith Council, different voices. And so we're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that we're able to be together tonight. And we're so glad um, that uh, we'll be able to be together each night this week, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 8. And if you want to stay and talk after the service, I'll be staying on with um, those that desire to do so. But we have Reverend Margaret Niles from Budigate um, Monastery and the Interfaith Council Board, who's going to be sharing tonight, and then Pastor Sung Ho Lee from Concord United Methodist and Reverend Hai Sung Lee from Brentwood United Methodist, as well as members of their congregation. And so we want to thank all of them in advance before we get started. And we're going to turn the, um, the program over to them. And let me just take care of one. Let me make uh, Sung Ho the um, mm -hmm. host, and he's going to lead us on and uh, share the portions that they have prepared for us tonight. Blessed be, let us be together be. in prayer. Thank you for coming to our election our healing service tonight. We come together to pray for our country. We come to pray for peace. We will have a week long prayer meeting and tonight is the first night. Some pastors in the Bay Area gather together and decide to invite diverse people from different traditions for this healing prayer service because we have many religious traditions and different faith communities in our country. So let us take a time for silent prayer for peace one minute. We will hear today prayer from Buddhist priest also. Let us have some silent time one minute. Tonight, we'll have a prayer from Buddhist priest as well as Methodist pastor. We'll also hear a brief description about with malice powered nun from St. Paul Episcopal Church. This prayer service has a three components. As you experience the silenced prayer, written prayer, 
and song prayer. We'll pray for peace, healing, unity, and kingdom of God. Each time we'll start with a silent prayer and end with either written prayer or a song prayer. So we had a silent prayer. Now I want to introduce Margaret Niles, Interfaith Chaplain, Buddhist Buddha Guest Gate Monastery to talk and lead us in prayer. Amitofo, good evening. I'm the Reverend Margaret Niles. I am an inter. Oops. Amitofo, good evening. I'm the Reverend Margaret Niles. I am an interfaith minister and I serve on the governing board of the Interfaith Council. I serve as an interfaith chaplain with our unhoused neighbors on the street and also with people who are transitioning from life to death, from infants to our elders. And I come to you as a Chan Buddhist, a Zen Buddhist, having taken vows in the Chung Thai tradition, learning from the Dharma teachings of Grand Master Wei Chui. As we gather here tonight, I believe we are doing something vital as a group, what we call Sangha in my tradition. And I would like to draw attention to two things in particular and offer you the compassion and wisdom from my tradition in the hopes that it may bring tenderness and awareness to your heart at this difficult time. Those two things are to acknowledge our personal and collective suffering and to invite you to be fully present right now. Because of our individual orientations toward our current events, whether you are struggling to find shelter or struggling to find a job, whether you are caring for children at home or for an elder that you can't see in person, or whether you are anxious about how your personal religious or even legal identity is being held by the greater community, we gather tonight to interrupt the isolation of that suffering and acknowledge that COVID in particular has made it difficult to remember that we live in community together. And so with this in mind, if you are willing, I invite you in this moment to close your eyes and to take two gentle breaths and settle your body in whatever feels the most nourishing way for you. Take another breath. If you are able, Release the energy of the day. Release what happened even one hour ago and come into your body right now, as it is right now. Feel your feet perhaps on the surface of the ground. Maybe uncross your legs or release your hands into relaxation. And listen as I read a short prayer adapted from Kathy Huff. Spirit of life called by so many names be present with us at this hour. Join us tonight as we gather in a wider search for truth and purpose. In this quest tonight, may we sit together and greet one another with open hearts and minds. May we inspire each other to consider new possibilities and seek deeper meaning. May we cultivate wisdom and compassion. Let all who have entered this special sanctuary see a welcome face, hear a kind word, and find comfort in this community. And may all that is done and said and prayed for here today be in service of love and justice. As you sit quietly, know that even that prayer I just read is now in the past. Release the echo of the prayer and rest in where the prayer has brought your body now. Take another breath. If you'd like, you can open your eyes, keeping your body soft. They say that the Buddha only taught one thing, and that was suffering. And these times in our world right now seem to be ripe for the teaching of suffering. But I suggest something different and something critically important to Buddhism. The Buddha, or the person whom we call the Buddha, did teach one thing, but that one thing was the liberation from suffering. So as one of my teachers, the Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams says, 
No matter what is happening, we have the choice to contribute to our path to being liberated from suffering, to being in relationship, and to loving and to being loved. The election is tomorrow. I suggest that starting tonight and moving into tomorrow, you choose to find your own way to your breath as often as possible, perhaps even at the top of every hour. No matter what your religion or what your faith or spirituality teaches you, I believe that we all understand our interconnectedness and the power that compassion action has on the rest of the world. I will take breaths for you, and maybe you will take breaths for each other. I wish peace for you and for all sentient beings. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be safe. May all beings awaken to the light of their true nature and may all beings be free. Amitofo. Um. Now we are going to have song prayer. Donna Novis Hachen, Lord give us peace. We will sing in Latin and Korean and English and Hebrew by Reverend Song Ho Lee and Reverend Hassan Lee. one minute silent prayer for peace.
Please no. join me in this responsive prayer for healing. O oh God of all creation, you have fearfully and wonderfully fashioned us and breathed your life into us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. And so tonight we ask your healing for our nation and the world. Lord, reign, reign in us. Precious Savior, reign and heal us. As the great physician who healed the woman at the well, you are the same wonderful God who finds us in the uttermost parts of the world to heal us, mind, spirit, and body. Awesome healer, rescue and deliver our nation, even now. As the master potter and crafter who takes broken things and mends them back together again, melt us and mold us into the restored children, women and men of America that you have destined us to be. Providing shepherd whose charts the path ahead of us, who both proceeds and follow us. Place your hand of healing blessings on our heads and shepherd our souls. Lord God, we desperately need your wisdom. You have given us a great country founded on the principles and truths from your word. We need men and women who will honor you, trust you, and lead us once again back to you. We pray for servant leaders who love the things you love and who care more about others than themselves. Heal us, God. Make us a great nation, yes. But more than that, make us good, Lord, with a heartbeat that wants every person of every creed and color to know your love, your goodness, and your worth. Make us wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. Turn our fears to faith as we look to you and you alone for the future of our country. Give us, God, confidence that no matter what happens, we will believe you are not only in control, but that you know exactly what is needed to accomplish your purpose. Help us not to second guess your moves, but to move at your command, always without hesitation. We bless your holy name and we praise you for being the God who heals not only our bodies, but also the soul of our nation. Hallelujah, God reigns, amen. Let's take now one minute silent prayer for unity.
now build the gamma from Concord United Methodist Church will sing, bind us together, but you can sing along, even though you are muted, you can sing in your heart. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together. silent prayer for God's kingdom. And kingdom is not a misspelling of a kingdom. While kingdom represents God's kingship and God's reign, kingdom shows the kingship among God's children. Jesus introduced us, our Father who is in heaven, in his teaching on prayer. So now when we pray, we pray to our Father in heaven for all God's children to live peacefully in harmony. Let us pray for God's kingdom silently for one minute. Somehow, um, Reverend Amy's sound doesn't come out, so I have to ask Will McCarthy. I can, I can, I have it queued up if you want. Why don't you let me be the host again, and I'll be able to share the screen. Sure. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, I'm Emily Hopkins and I worship at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Walnut Creek. And I'm here today to share with you an organization that I've become a member of. And uh, we are offering uh, some, the purpose of the organization, it's called Braver Angels. Uh, we are here to bring our nation together. And we have a lot of resources available to everyone 
And there's an especially an initiative around this November election season that I'd like to share with you. So I have some slides for you and then the information will be available at the end of the program. Braver Angels is a national organization, um, primarily volunteer, that has the mission for depolarizing America and bringing us together. The website is braverangels.org. In November, our initiative called With Malice Towards None is offering several um, programs that can be that are national and you can participate in those um, on election night, November 3rd. Uh, there is a secular and spiritual programming going on um, most of the night, as you can see there. On November 4th, the night after the election, another uh, program of healing prayers and uh, coming together. And locally, we are hosting, uh, Grace Martinez is hosting their faithful forum, uh, which is some post-election gatherings on Zoom. And again, these links will be provided to you uh, after the program tonight. These are the resources. BraverAngels.org has a number of resources, as I mentioned. Uh, they have debates and they have training opportunities, some workshops that you can participate in individually on your own online or with groups. The program that I mentioned with Malice Towards None is a uh, some ways to have productive conversations that bring us together rather than tear us apart. You can register as an organization, as a faith group, or you can do it individually. And at the end of my program, I'm going to talk about the pledge that we take. Also part of that is Hold America Together. There's a public letter, which uh, over 5,000 people have signed, uh, stating that we will not uh, condone any violence related to the election. And again, praying and hoping for our country to come together following the election. And again, there are several Bay Area alliances um, in San Francisco Bay Area. There's San Francisco, Alameda, and there soon will be a couple in Contra Costa. And I want to thank those of you who have come to our, uh, our meetings and had conversations with us so far. So in closing, I'd like to offer the pledge that we have, the With Malice Towards None pledge that you are um, invited to look at online and take. And it says, regardless of how the election turns out, I will not hold hate, disdain, or ridicule for those who voted differently from me. Whether I am pleased or upset about the outcome, I will seek to understand the concerns and aspirations of those who voted differently and will look for opportunities to work with people with whom I don't agree. So this is a With Malice Towards None pledge. It's our initiative of Braver Angels. We're a citizens organization of red, blue, and other Americans all across the political spectrum um, working together to have less rancor and more goodwill in our politics and in our nation. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, Joe Kick from uh, the Brentwood Community United Methodist Church wrote a song uh, for this uh, uh, service. So I will uh, share that uh, song. It's a song prayer, but uh, he he made he composed this song originally uh, for this uh, service. So after this song, uh, Michel Paul from the Concord United Methodist Church will uh, lead us in closing in prayer. So. Uh. Thank you. 
Michel Pope, would you lead us in closing prayer? Yes, let's be in prayer. Lord God, as the election approaches, approaches, we seek to better understand the issues and concerns that confront our city, our state, our country, our neighborhoods, and how the gospel compels us to respond as faithful citizens in our community. We ask for eyes that are free from blindness so that we might see each other as brothers and sisters, one and equal in dignity, especially those who are victims of abuse, violence, deceit, and poverty. Lord, be with us as we go and try to figure out why there is so much oppression and where we don't see you, help us to look closer because we know there you are. We ask for minds and hearts that are open to hearing the voice of leaders who will bring us closer to your kingdom. And we pray for discernment so that we may choose leaders who hear your word, live in your love and keep in the ways of truth. We pray Lord that you will guide us through this night and help us to find the peace that we need to rest and then grant us the privilege of knowing that you walk among us and we need not be afraid. Awaken us, Father, awaken us to a time where we are committed to justice and to each other as a human family. Awaken us so that we can be committed to live out the gospel. Awaken us so that we can learn to love each other with dignity and respect. We ask these things through our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Now I give it back to Will McGabby so he can uh, say some uh, closing words and other announcements. We're so grateful that you joined us tonight. And we're so grateful that you were able to be a part of our time together. And um, uh, I'm going to, I've put a lot of the data that was shared in the Braver Angels, especially the offerings and the different links of the resources and even the text inside the chat room, if you want it. We're also going to put this text inside the um, YouTube um, link for our recording. And so we are grateful that you've been here with us tonight. We hope that you'll join us and invite one or two people to join you for tomorrow. It'll be a very different service being led by Reverend Barbara Barkley and uh, Dr. Erica Baines from the Presbyterian and Sikh traditions. And um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we'll have uh, Jewish leadership. Uh, and uh, on Wednesday night, we'll have Baha'i leadership on Thursday night and Muslim leadership with us on Friday night as well. And um, the other just word that I'll say is that um, if if there uh, is a, a stressful time, especially if there are challenges in the courts to every vote being counted, um, for those that are willing and able um, and desirous of being together safely with distancing and with masks, um, we may uh, call for folks to meet us at the uh, um, gazebo in Civic Park in Walnut Creek. Um, so look on our Facebook page for that. And our, um, our annual meeting is this Sunday night at 7 p.m. where we're going to be 
not only celebrating all of our interfaith ministries like this one, but also celebrating with our Making a Difference Award. Um, Kathleen Sullivan from the Greater Richmond Interfaith Program, which continues to do amazing work in West County, including overseeing 200 people that are living inside the Richmond Courtyard Marriott. And uh, Sandra Scherer and her team at the Mount Dia uh, or Monument Crisis Center, and they've been doing food distribution even during the height of the COVID pandemic. And um, we'll also be honoring um, Leslie Gleason from the Trinity Center in Walnut Creek, Ton Hall from uh, the Miles Hall Foundation, and the Friends of Scott and Ton Hall, who've done amazing work over the last year and a half around mental health and Gigi Crowder, the executive director of NAMI Contra Costa, who has lifted up the needs of uh, both the, the um, African-American community, but also the mental health needs of our whole county. And so join us Sunday night as we celebrate them and uh, uh, join us any of these weeknights for our prayer times together. For those of you that would like to be able to stay uh, and share greetings and um, Zoom hugs, We'll, uh, we'll do that for a little while so you have time to copy and paste anything out of the chat room that you'd like. Have a great night. We're so grateful to you. Thank you again, Reverend Margaret Niles from the Interfaith Council Board and uh, the Buddhist tradition, uh, Pastor Sung Ho Lee from Concord United Methodist and Pastor Hai Sung Lee from Brentwood United Methodist and all of the members of your congregations that made tonight a success and a, a peaceful time together. May peace prevail on earth. Amen.